Okay, let's do something really cool. Uh, a couple hours ago, uh, I got introduced to ChatGPT group chat. Uh, I couldn't do a demo because I didn't have two people to chat with. So what I did, and I'm going to show you right now, is a live demo of the brand new ChatGPT group chat. And I'm going to show you how this applies to learning situations. So here's the scenario. I've got two browsers opened up. One of them is Safari, one of them is Chrome. I've got myself logged in on my personal account on one, and I created a dummy account on the other one. What I am going to do is I'm going to start a group chat in my account. I'm going to invite the other person. And what's going to happen is we're going to do a test chat. And there's a couple things that I want to look for here. The first one is, is this is set up so that it's about a discussion. I'm going to use WordPress, for example, just because I'm familiar with that. And it's someone who's beginner to WordPress or just learning things and they're chatting with someone else. Maybe he was in the class or maybe who took the course or maybe it's in a cohort or maybe watched one of your videos. They're here and they're going, hey, okay, what do I do? What's next? They're not sure. They want to have someone to talk to and now they do. In this case, we're going to show a live example where there's two people plus ChatGPT. Two real people, one digital person. So let's actually see what happens. And again, I did one demo of this myself before the video. This is live and ad hoc. The only thing that I worked on is I do have some examples of the chats that people might have just so I can cut and paste them and not have to put a whole bunch of sentences in. So there's two things I want to look at. One is specifically how these chats go back and forth. And then the second thing is, is I want to show you um, the uh, way that we can customize the way that ChatGPT works within this specific task. So let's get started uh, and we'll start here. I'm going to open up Chrome and uh, we'll look at the interface just because I still have it here. And remember, when you have access to it, this is only available for five countries right now. Uh, and I think it's uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan, and there's a couple other ones. It's available for all the uh, versions of it. So that's the free to the paid ones. And in fact, I'm in my paid one, the plus model here. The other screen that I have open in Safari is just the free model. So here we go. A couple things to notice. I mentioned these before. I'll go over them quickly. The left hand side has group chats projects, GPTs, and regular chats, which is different. So in my case, I'm just going to go and look at that group, group chats. I'm going to open it up. I've had a couple here. And you can see that I've got one with another person. That's a learning WordPress one that we did before. I can do a new group one. And access query is when we actually go and search all of the group chats we've had. Because remember, they don't get deleted unless the person that started the group chat deletes it, we're going to have a whole library of group chats, like a huge resource center for all of the interactions that we've been doing within our community. And in this case, I'm using it specifically for education. So I'm in my account here. Why don't we do this? I'm going to do a new group chat. And it says, James just created a brand new group chat. Uh, and it never used in group chats. So remember that because I'm in my account, it doesn't have my personal memory of my chats. This is se severed off or separated. This is what ChatGP says completely from my personal stuff. It is a separate one that is just for the group. Now I have a couple things that I can do here. One of them is I'm just going to invite with a link and it's going to create a link for me that I can send in an email or give manually to someone else. So use a group link to invite other people to join anyone can join your group with this link and they'll be able to see the previous messages in the group chat. So I'm going to copy it. It's in the clipboard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to Safari. And in my case, let me just close this one because we had one that was closed. I'm going to close these other ones here. We'll just do a new tab. And again, I'm in Safari. Let's open up the link and see what happens. There's the link. It goes in and Shazam, we're now in ChatGPT. Now, do I know if this happens and if the person has to have a ChatGPT account? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so this is the one I did the link. It went to the web version, so I'm not really sure what's happening here. 
And it does look, yes, in the bottom left-hand corner, this is my free account. I had it set up as Jamie. This is one that I opened before. So I would suspect that the person that's having the chat with uh, either has to have a ChatGPT account or will be asked to do one when they want. So here's the couple things to notice. I was the one that was invited, correct? So if I look in my normal place where I might be spending time in the chat box here, you'll see that there's a setup button and it's set up my profile. So one of the things I talked about in the previous video is that when you get into these chats, it doesn't take your information from your ChatGPT account. It's gonna ask you to, or give you the option to put a picture up or an image or icon up to represent you plus give yourself a name and build out a little bit of a profile for yourself. So when someone's chatting with you, uh, you're actually gonna go and see it. Okay, so if I don't wanna join, I don't have to, but in my case, yeah, I'm all in. Let's join and see what happens. And I'm now in a brand new group chat. So James created the group chat. That was me and the other one. Your personal chat memory is never used in this chat and there's the invite link. The other thing is that I, I believe, and again, this one I'm just working on a little bit uh, off the cuff, I suspect that I can also invite someone else into the chat. I'm not quite sure, we'll have to test that a little bit later because I have invite with the link here. So I can invite another user, and again, up to 20 is what I read in the literature. And in my case, what's the scenario that we were using? Well, I came up with a little one just to play around with it uh, and see what happens, and again, I used uh, ChatGPT, I used actually Claude to come up with a scenario just so that we could kind of use it to uh, spend some time with it. So uh, what I did, and again, I'm just gonna show you what I did. I said, I need to do a demo of a group chat between two students, two of them would be human and one would be ChatGPT for a total of three. I just want an example scenario. Uh, so the ex thing that I'm doing here is I'm made the scenario, I'm just pretending to chat about WordPress for beginners course. They're in week watch, they just watched a video and they're chatting um, in the group chat about the course. So we've got Sarah who's excited and then Mike who's tech, uh, really tech worried. So here's the first part that's gonna happen. I'm gonna put in what Sarah starts off with. We'll put it in the chat and actually see what happens. And we'll do it. I'm not the person that started the chat, but I'm gonna go put it in. I'm gonna pretend I'm Sarah. I'm just gonna paste it in. Hi everyone, just finished the plugin video. I found like 20 different forms. You'll notice that the emojis, the little, little uh, uh, responses are there, and I'm gonna put it in. Now ChatGPT is taking a look, and I'm gonna show you this in a second because there's something unique here. It's taking a look at this. It is reading the text, and look what happens. It gave a response right away. I didn't ask it a question. This is kind of what we're used to, right? It's like prompt, response, prompt response. And it gave an answer based on the question that this person had. So I'm gonna go take a look at this one. It's given me some examples of ones that are there. Let's go look at the other side. And I'm the one that opened up that chat. And you can see that the other person's chat is here and the response that ChatGPT gave is here as well. So that means that we've got three people in the chat. Me who has not responded, ChatGPT that has responded, and Sarah that started in. And I'm just gonna go here and say, another little chat there, I'm gonna be Mike, the techie guy who's afraid of the technology. I'm gonna put it in. Honestly, I'm scared to install anything. What if I crash my site? Can that actually happen? Now ChatGPT is thinking, and it's Mike go and give us an answer here. And I'm, waiting for it to respond, it seems to be a little bit slower than I wanted, but hey, it's working in the background. So let's see what happens here. Uh, course bot response. And there we go, it's got a little bit of some options here, site won't load, a whole bunch of stuff. Now here's the part that uh, I'm looking at, this is the second time I tried this. So I was going, I don't want a response every time I add something. I only want ChatGPT to either answer when I want them to, or I want to make sure that when it answers, I answer or it gets involved the way I want it to. So here's one of the things that I did. I went to Claude just as an example, and I said, well, if I did have some rules or special instructions for 
this digital member of our group chat, what would they be? And this is exactly some of the things you're going to notice when you start playing around with this. Up in the top left-hand side, let me just get rid of this for a second. We'll open it up a little bit. So right-hand side, you can see where I've got new group chat, right? This is the one that I started that I created. I just want to make sure I'm in the same page here. So this is the one that I started. If you see the little drop-down arrow here, you have a couple options. These are the people that are in it. Manage group link, rename group, customize ChatGPT, report, leave group, and delete. So here's a couple things that we can do. I can rename the group, and I'm just going to call it Beginner's WordPress uh, Chat. I'm going to rename it. It's there. That's the first thing. So I can rename it, and that renames it for everyone. So if I'm going over and I open up my sidebar again, you can see that the, re the name of the actual chat has changed. That's the first thing. So if I go back up to the top here, you've got manage the group link. So I can do it if someone else is getting in, I don't want them to. I can manage the people that are in it, take a look at who's there and give them specific, uh, remove them or report them from the thing. But the other one that's of interest here, and this is the one that's important, if you are in some kind of educational space and you want to control how ChatGPT gets involved, here we go. Customize ChatGPT. So let's see what happens. These are the important ones. I can now customize not only GPT, but it's set by default to respond automatically. That's the part I didn't want it to do. I didn't want it involved at all unless I requested it or there was something that was maybe important. So here's what's happened. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to save it. So what happens now is if I go back and make a prompt, and let's just go grab one here so we can play around with it. Uh, let me just do one here. Let me so uh, I'm just going to copy one here. Uh, and I'm just again, I'm logged in as James. This is me, the main person that started it. I'm just going to type something in here. I heard about a plugin called Rank Math. What does it do? Now, what should happen here is because I turned it off, ChatGPT will look at it, but it's not going to jump all over it. It doesn't answer. If I go and I take a look for the other one, for the other users, the chat will be there, but there's nothing that happens. So the auto response is moved, which is I want, because we can go back and forth, 20 of us, three of us, four of us, two of us back and forth and just have the chat. Other things to look at here on the right hand side, when I hold my mouse over it, I've got all of the different things that you normally see in this, and I can also flag it or report it uh, as well. What else do we have here? Looks like we may have, oh, there we go, a whole bunch of emoticons and stuff that we can put in here. Perfect. Added, we're in, and I'm just going to say, haven't heard of that one. And I'm going to do the response. So here's the thing that's happening. I don't have the response, regular chat, back and forth. There's a couple other things here to notice. One is the plus sign, web search, I can turn on, create images, and also add photos and files. So if I'm working on a transcript of a video, or maybe I've got documents or PDFs that are part of the class, these can now be up and worked on in a group. Really, really cool. But the part that I'm excited about is this one right here. And I'm going to show you what I came up with uh, just as an example of some instructions that you might want to consider if you were doing something. And let me just open this one up. We'll do a brand new doc so I can print it out and we'll look at it just to give you an example of how this might work. So I'm in Google Docs right now and we'll just do a new document. And I just want to show this to you because I made one up. Uh, just as an example of what we might want to do with some kind of instructions uh, for ChatGPT. And this is a course community. Just calling it here. I want to make sure everything's showing up. This is my course community assistant. Remember, we've got two real people, one digital person in the chat. I've given it a role here. Your friendly teaching assistant. 
online beginner course community job is to help students learn, but more importantly, to help them feel confident and supported. It's a beginner class, right? When to respond. These are some rules on when you want to respond it. If they've asked a question that hasn't been answered yet, if they're frustrated, confused, uh, if someone has been waiting 10 minutes without help from other students, don't respond. Some rules there. How to respond. The tone and style. Is it you want it to be the expert or someone that's understanding? Hey, great question. Do you want people to feel comfortable with it like it's another person or do you want it to be uh, the expert instructor that comes across? Okay. And then also the structure of the responses. Sometimes it's like always a is what you're asking this, you just get a mechanical response. If you want it to be more natural, like another person, you can give the structure of those back and forth. Never to respond. Special instructions, the personality that you want to have, example response uh, patterns. So those are just some different ways that you might want to get involved and start thinking about how do I want my assistant that is available there all of the time and have them engaged with the real people. And where does that happen? It happens in customized ChatGPT, and you can paste your instructions in specifically for this group. Now that means that you've got a permanent group chat with up to 20 people that can have, uh, you can invite them and they can invite other people. You can remove them, you can rename your chat, you can use all of the things that you normally use in a group chat, like uploading files and images, using uh, um, uh, uh, emo no, emojis there, the little icons. Uh, you can query them. This is a huge tool and it's very, very simple to use. And I think once you start thinking about if I give this to my students and in fact that they're going to have it irrespective of if you think they should. So we're going to have to figure out how are we going to use this? How are we going to allow them to leverage this? And is this something we're going to give to students as part of the stuff that we either teach or try and sell with a course? This is really cool because you can think of it now as a coach that is there 24 seven based on your rules, based on your processes. And this is a place for them to be learning when they need to, the way that they need to, but still based on your content and your discussions that you've got them started on. So if this is something that interests to you, uh, let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you haven't, join trainingsites.io forward slash join. I put all of my videos, all of my content, anything having to do with starting, building, and growing your own AI learning community, a privately branded campus. Um, this is fun stuff. I'm excited. 400 days, 2026. This whole education space is being disrupted, and I want you to be there as you build your education business. Like and subscribe to the channel, all that cool stuff. It's James speaking. We'll be back uh, shortly with another video of this as I learn some more about it, but also some really cool stuff that Google's doing with automation and agents for real people, non-technical agents. You'll like that one as well. Take care. Expect the best. We'll be right back.